Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I'll start with a few announcements as I always do on Tuesdays. Um, the first thing is if you, if you have not yet seen Food Choices, the new film that I'm in, I highly recommend that you see it. You can watch it on iTunes, Google something or other. Some of you know I'm technically impaired so I never know what the right terms for anything are. But, um, and also on cable TV it's pay-per-view getting great reviews. We're the number one film in the documentary category in um, Mexico, UK, number five in Germany, number eight in Canada, one to four in um, the United States, depending on which day you ask. And uh, I'm really proud of it. The producer is just an amazing guy. He just made a beautiful film. And it's all about the details behind the diet that everybody wanted to know after forks over knives and also the bigger picture, the environment, animal welfare, that sort of thing. So highly recommend this film. Of course I'm in it, so I highly recommend this film. I just can't help but be real proud about it. Um, second thing, and this is really, really cool, we have another free workshop coming up October 3rd. It's going to be a sellout because it is a free workshop on vaccines. Um, Dr. Kathy Waller has agreed to spend a little bit of time on the phone at no charge to talk about the overview. Some of you know she's done a really extensive course for us that's available, um, but she's going to talk about the overview of what that course is all about. Um, so you get some free information and that is October 3rd at 7 p.m. Last but not least, it really truly is time for a conference registration because the tickets go up in price all the time. And we have an all-star lineup, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, Dr. Neil Barnard, uh, Dr. Thomas Seyfried, who wrote a great textbook called Cancer is a Metabolic Disease. This guy has some amazing things to tell you about cancer. Peter Bregan, uh, our business partner in the mental health field, Marielle von Lanthan, who's going to talk about diet and reflux, Dr. Janice Stanger, diet and pregnancy. Um, the list goes on. I mean, it's really phenomenal. Your meals are included, and it's our 20th anniversary. I think surviving 20 years in business is a pretty amazing thing, so you definitely want to come and celebrate with us. All right, so let's get into today's topic. So I want to start with uh, antibiotics, a very important issue. Every year in the United States, over 2 million people develop some type of bacterial infection that is resistant to antibiotics, and 23,000 of them die of these infections. And there are a lot of reasons why these antibiotic-resistant uh, bacterial infections are developing and increasing. One of them is the use of antibiotics in raising livestock, and another is over-prescribing antibiotics in health uh, practices. Now, most health professionals and institutions, I have to say, and I will give some credit here, you guys know I'm very hard on the medical profession, but I will give some credit, there's a lot of effort to reduce antibiotic prescribing. However, um, there is a, a, a bit of an exception when it comes to dentists. Recent studies shows that dentists are actually prescribing more rather than fewer antibiotics uh, these days. And um, that's in spite of the fact that it has been talked about a lot and it is well documented that overprescribing of antibiotics in dental practices is actually really common. So a recent study involved looking at data on outpatient prescriptions from 1996 to 2013. Now during this time, just to give you an idea of the contrast, there was an 18.2% drop in physician prescribing of antibiotics, but prescribing by dentists increased by 62.2%. That is huge. During that same time, the percentage of antibiotics prescribed by dentists increased from 6.7% of the total to 11.3% of the total. And the biggest uh, increase was in patients who were 60 years of age or older who would be more likely to succumb to um, uh, an antibiotic-resistant bacterial infection. Now, some of the reasons cited for the increase were unnecessary prescriptions for things like abscesses, prescribing associated with dental implants, failure to adapt to new guidelines recommended, um, uh, recommending less antibiotic prescribing for patients with heart disease and prosthetic joints, and the increase in the number of dentists per capita. Apparently, just being in practice is a risk factor for increasing prescriptions for antibiotics. Now, an article written by a dentist and posted on Medscape calls for immediate change since the overuse of antibiotics is well documented and is leading to increased risk of infection and death. 
The author calls on dentists to change their prescribing habits to conform with evidence-based guidelines. And the particular areas of interest are that antibiotics are not recommended for patients with joint implants before dental procedures. They are not recommended for patients with coronary artery disease or who have had stents or bypass surgery to prevent uh, infective endocarditis prior to dental procedures. The American Dental Association's Council on Scientific Affairs states that, quote, any perceived potential benefit of antibiotic prophylaxis must be weighed against the development, selection, and transmit, uh, transmission of microbial resistance. The author states that dentists should never use antibiotics, quote, just to be on the safe side or in foreign inflammatory conditions which cannot benefit from antimicrobial treatment. He says dentists haven't been subject to the same level of scrutiny that hospitals and other med uh, medical practices have concerning screening who should really be taking an antibiotic and who should not. And it's really time to get with the program on best practices here. Now, I, I hate to sound like the pessimist all the time, but the, re, the, the um, chance that this is going to happen anytime soon, almost non-existent because we know that no matter what the evidence says, practices tend to not change. And I talk about that on this channel an awful lot. So this means the consumer has to know. That's why we're in business every day. If we're waiting for the government to fix our problems and health professionals to change their ways, we'll all be dead by the time that happens. So it's important for you to know and to say no to antibiotics prescribed by dentists most of the time. All right, other topic. We're talking about things that affect everybody today. Antibiotics affect everybody. Everybody's going to the dentist. We're all at risk for uh, overprescribing. Here's another thing that affects a lot of people, and that's weight loss. Let's face it, under the best of circumstances, weight loss can be difficult. Learning new dietary patterns and working toward establishing a regular exercise routine, it's difficult for a lot of people. And when the weight doesn't come off or it comes off at a snail's pace, it can be really discouraging and it's just easy to throw up your hands and say, I, you know, no matter what I do, it doesn't make a difference. There are a lot of things that can interfere with weight loss and interestingly enough, one of them is sleep. Or perhaps it would be more accurate to say lack of sleep. Now there are several ways in which lack of sleep or poor sleep can undermine efforts to achieve and maintain optimal weight. One of the biggest ones is when the body is stressed, it produces more cortisol and the body perceives lack of sleep as a stressful situation, hence producing more cortisol. Now what happens is increased cortisol causes increased fat storage and it especially causes it in the abdominal area which increases the risk for diseases even more. Sleep deprivation also increases insulin resistance, which contributes to increased risk of both diabetes and more obesity. Ghrelin and leptin are hormones that regulate appetite. And the way that this works is that the body produces ghrelin as your blood glucose levels fall and you start to get hungry. And then as you eat, and you begin to achieve satiety, those ghrelin levels fall, and your leptin levels increase. Leptin is a hormone that's associated with satiety. The problem is when you don't get enough sleep, ghrelin production increases and leptin production decreases, which means that you'll be hungry more, more often and for longer. In one study, patients who got three hours less sleep per night than controls had almost a 15% increase in their ghrelin levels and a 15.5% decrease in their leptin levels. So what that means is feeling hungry all the time and um, not feeling satiety even when you've eaten enough food. Studies show that sleep deprivation can cause decreased strength and weight gain. Weight gained as a result of not sleeping, however, can be lost quickly if people just start getting enough sleep. According to University of Pennsylvania sleep researcher David Dingus, epidemiological studies show that people who sleep less than six hours a night, most of them are obese or overweight. They also have an increased risk of developing diabetes or having a heart attack. Again, a lot of it's where the fat is stored, abdominal fat being more dangerous. Now, there are all kinds of, of mechanisms of action, but simple overeating in response to sleep deprivation is the low-hanging fruit here. One study showed that people who don't get enough sleep eat an additional 300 calories a day. Well, think about it. An additional 300 calories a day is 2,100 calories in a week, and in a week and a half, you've gained a pound. Well, carry that out for a year and you see where the problem is. Sleeping more by itself is not going to result in weight loss. But having said that, the standard line that we give to everybody, if you want to lose weight, just eat less and exercise more. It actually is more complex than that. We have to do a lot of things right. And, um, and some of this information about weight loss is particularly important for people who've been overweight or obese for a really long period of time because your hormones are already out of whack. 
And you can make it worse or make it better by doing things like getting enough sleep. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.